Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you one of the ways that I like to fill my sketchbooks. It's sort of a low pressure exercise that I like to do every once in a while. Um, and I don't know, I think it's really fun. I think it's really simple. Um, and it's a really nice stress-free way to get some pages filled. I like to do this late at night when I haven't sketched all day. Um, just something fun to do for the end of the day and then feel like I've accomplished something. So usually what I do is I'll take a pen. I think I'm going to use this brown one. I might try something else later, but we'll start with this. Um, and in my sketchbook I'm going to make a bunch of like random shapes with watercolor. Uh, watercolor I find is the best to use for this. Um, gouache will sometimes gum up your pens or your pencils a bit too much. Uh, not always, but sometimes. So watercolor I find sinks into the paper a bit better. And you don't have to use fancy paper for this. This sketchbook I'm using is just from the dollar store. Uh, and really it, it, it works just fine. So here's an example of this exercise that I did last night. I just did some purple shapes and I filled them in with sphinx drawings. Um, so they're not my typical style, I guess you would say, um, especially not if you guys follow me for my natural history illustrations. Um, that's the sort of thing that takes more time to come up with and to execute. But what I've been doing a lot lately is I've been playing a ton of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, <laughs> which is like, it's so much fun. Um, I love ancient history, I love antiquity, I love reading about it too. If you guys ever want to read some really good books about ancient history, specifically if you're looking to learn about um, Roman history or the rise of Christianity in Europe, um, the author Tom Holland is a really great author and I would recommend any of his books. They're beautifully written, they have so much character, um, but they're also their history, so they're nonfiction, um, and I can't recommend them highly enough. That's Tom Holland. I'll maybe link one of his books in, in the description below. Um, but yeah, not the Tom Holland who was Spider-Man. They're two different guys. <laughs> but it's kind of funny. The, um, the author, historian Tom Holland, gets complimented for his acting skills on Twitter all the time. <laughs> I just think that's funny. But yeah, I love learning about ancient history. I love learning about nature. So usually while I'm reading, I'll switch between fiction and nonfiction novels. Um, you can learn a lot from both. And uh, I don't know, I just think it's, it's important to branch out sometimes. And for me anyway, it helps keep me interested in reading if I switch. Sometimes I'm really in a a, a non-fiction mood, so I'll pick up something from my shelf that's historical or biographical or a science book. Um, but I also read a ton of, of science fiction too and fantasy and uh, I want to read more historical fiction, like not history but like historical fiction. I've read one book called John the Pupil by an author called Brian Flusfader, and I really loved that book, so I'm trying to find some more books sort of like that, sort of one set in medieval times. Um, but yeah, back to Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Um, so far, I think the game is fantastic. Um, it's huge. It's massive. It's like the last big game, like I've played Skyrim, but the last big game I've played was probably um, probably Dragon Age Inquisition. I also played Mass Effect Andromeda, but I don't think that one was as big as it purported to be. Um, whereas Assassin's Creed Odyssey is massive. Like, my boyfriend and I are both playing on characters and we're at different points in the game, but I'm behind him. So if the game wasn't big enough, we'd be playing through the exact same things, right? But I'm actually finding a ton of stuff in the game that he didn't find at all. So it's really awesome in, in that respect. Um, 
I mean, plus I'm playing as the female character and she's a total badass, so <laughs> I'm having tons of fun. Um, I love that you get to meet actual historical characters um, like Herodotus and uh, Hippocrates and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> the other day I like fought a pirate, a mercenary, and his like his randomly generated name was Xenophon, which <laughs> if you know anything about uh, the histories or the people who were writing during the time, yeah, I just thought it was really funny that they actually generated a person called Xenophon. So of course I recruited him to my trireme crew. Anyway, it's super fun. So I think for this exercise, I'm gonna just paint some cool ladies in armor <laughs> because that's what I like. Um, but yeah, as to I guess how I've been doing, aside from playing a ton of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Um, work has been very busy. I work at a museum and it's an awesome job. I love it a lot. I'm very lucky to work there. Sometimes it's quite stressful too. It's a job like any other. But I mean, part of my job today was making a tiny hat for a dinosaur skeleton because <laughs> it's almost Halloween. So, you know, it's pretty awesome. Um, When this goes up, Halloween will be over, and uh, yeah, perhaps if you follow my museum on Instagram, you'll see that little hat, or you'll see another little hat. We've uh, we've tried multiple hats. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been settling in nicely to my new town. I realize that I've been here for like six months almost. It's gonna be six months in about two weeks, so five months, two weeks we've been here. Um, more like five months for the house, but five months, two weeks for for my job, which feels like I've been here much longer than that, but also feels like I've been here for like three days. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I've been good. It's been hard to film lately. Um, part of the reason is that the sun's going down earlier and earlier. Um, this time change is actually on this Sunday uh, when you'll be watching this video for the first time. So then the sun will be setting even earlier. Amazing. But this happens every year. <laughs> That's what I get for living in such a northerly latitude. It could be worse. I could live in the Northwest Territories or something. <laughs> I could be living in Whitehorse or Yellowknife. Um, So, obviously I've been making these silhouettes with a particular theme in mind. So you can sort of guide them in a direction that, that you want to be drawing in. They don't have to be totally random. Um, even when I do them totally random, um, I try to at least compose them nicely throughout the page. So that takes some of the, the randomness away already. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, it's just your sketchbook. Your sketchbook is a place to try out ideas. Um, and they don't all have to be good. There's certainly things in, in these sketchbooks that I'm not too thrilled with. But that's not the point. Um, I really enjoy finishing sketchbooks. Um, and I enjoy finishing them fast enough to get them up on YouTube now that I share them that way on YouTube. Um, but this sketchbook has been taking me a long time because I haven't been drawing in it for work. Uh, I have a separate work sketchbook because a lot of that stuff uh, I have to keep secret. So this one doesn't get quite as much tension, which is why I haven't uploaded a sketchbook tour in quite a while. But Hopefully, a few more videos like this of me just chatting and painting, um, and hopefully we'll have a full-on sketchbook tour to show in the future. I'm going to let these dry, and uh, I think I'll put on some music and maybe play this at double speed, something like that. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy watching. <laughs> 